Hello everyone, happy Wednesday, and it is time for another check-in on TMTL turn-based division one. I am Matt the Lesser, and last time, a few days ago, we revealed the results of the fast auctions in three of the four games in turn-based div one, and now the games are going. So this is going to be the first of the sort of more normal check-ins on these games. All of the games are now into round two. So today we'll do a little bit of a recap of round one for every game, as well as I'll talk about um, the one uh, fast auction result that we hadn't covered because it hadn't happened yet um, last time. And that's what we'll do. So let's jump right into it. We've got the uh, first game on the screen here. Uh, and this is the game that had not uh, completed the auction last time around. So this is uh, Fire and Ice map, obviously. Uh, no Fire and Ice factions, but we've got some cluster scoring. Um, and if you remember correctly, uh, I bid the most on mermaids in this game. I think it was then... I don't even remember what my other orderings were, but I had another game where I got my, my preferred faction, uh, but also another game where... Uh, others agreed with my assessments. Um, I didn't go through and do the full spreadsheet analysis that I did last time, um, but the final auction results were uh, Mellison got Darklings for 40, uh, Red Alert got Engineers for 35, uh, George got Fakirs also for 40, and then I had Mermaids at 24. Um, so clearly, uh, you know, at least one other person, if not multiple other people, uh, value mermaids quite highly, but but my bid was enough to get them uh, at that price, which, you know, obviously my bids in, uh, indicated that I was willing to pay that much, so I, I can't complain. Certainly would have loved to get them, you know, for a little bit less, but I think a 16-point deficit versus the 240 factions, um, you know, is is fine. Um, and so I think their mermaids are, are in a great position uh and, you know, very happy to, to be playing them in this game. So the first round was uh, dwelling scoring. And so just to do uh, a bit of a recap, you can see, obviously, that I got double dig. One of the reasons that I was very interested in having mermaids in this game. Um, I had to do it with ship scoring uh, and not temp ship because I was in, uh, man, I don't even remember what seat I was. But, oh, uh, so the Darklings were in seat four, and they took Temp Ship and actually opened with a Dwelling Rush. A uh, bit of a unique opening for Darklings, but but kind of a cool one in a Dwelling Scoring round. So Nelson started uh, D5, E3, obviously had his one Priest uh, in hand that he starts with as the Darklings, and then took another Priest action and was able to dig build F4, as well as dig build B3, A3, and C2. So four new Dwellings with the four workers that he had. Obviously, the downside of a Darkling Dwelling Rush is you don't build a temple, which means you delay producing more priests, which are ever so important for Darklings. But I think uh, in this scenario, we were able to get the full four dwellings out in a dwelling round with temp ship and cover some ground. Um, that was pretty interesting and, and cool to see the Darklings do. Um, I was able to open a uh, temple. Uh, I took Fire 1 and just built two, two dwellings with my double dig. I dug C4 and... D9, and I also now have free access to D10. Obviously didn't have the worker to build that because I did want to build uh, the temple. I will admit here that I took the wrong favor tile. And not so much as like I'm looking back and being like, oh, I should have taken a different favor tile. I literally had planned to take one favor tile as I was thinking about it. And then I got confused because I have two games in this league now where I'm playing mermaids. And I was doing this on my phone, which... I always tell myself that I shouldn't do, but I was traveling this weekend. I was looking at my phone, and it came back to me after I had built my temple. Someone had I had to wait for someone to make their leech decision. It came back to me, and I thought it was the other game, or I didn't look closely enough. And I took Fire One, which is fine. Like, and this we'll talk about this in a second. Like, Fire One is great for mermaids in almost every game. There's ship scoring, all that's going to be fine. But I actually had meant to take Water Two, um, which would have been really fun. <laughs> Um, because it was dwelling scoring with a water reward, so that would have given me enough to get the extra priest water reward, and I could have used a step on uh, air last round and a step on air this round, plus a priest uh, to get the air reward this round, or maybe 
TV if I'd gotten the three spot on air, which as you can see, it is available to me right now. Could have gotten then even the fire reward the next round. So I, I you know, that would have spun me into a much more culty mermaids game. And that really actually was the line that I was intending to play. But uh, due to my oversight, I am now sitting on fire one, which is also okay because this, there is cluster scoring. There's extra scoring in this game. So there's nothing wrong with going more uh, heavy econ. Um, and so that's kind of the route that I'm going uh, now, uh, other openings, uh, both temples, uh, both fakirs and engineers opened double temple, which was actually pretty interesting for a dwelling round. Uh, the engineers were also able to build a dwelling with that temple. They were on, they had the spade tile. Um, so now I remember it was darklings were in seat four, took temp ship. Engineers were in seat three, took the spade. I was in seat two, took ship scoring to secure a double dig. And then fakirs took the big building tile. Um, and open double temple. So uh, a bit weird again, you know, uh, double temple openings in the dwelling round, but but pretty good positioning for both of them, um, especially with the engineers being able to get an extra uh, dwelling also. And so that was sort of round one. And then now here in uh, round two, um, engineers were able to take double dig with temp ship and they dug, so that, that single dwelling last round was on G5. They are able to take E2 uh, and also dig F3, so they're going to be able to build some dwellings this round. So a little bit misaligned with the track, but a pretty nice opening from a, a ground cover standpoint as the engineers. One thing I did find interesting is that he went for both of these instead of placing one of them on E4. Um, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to whether he thinks he doesn't need A4 because he's thinking of maybe spinning around down here through like G8, G7 to connect, or if he just thinks he can beat the Darklings to it. The Darklings are upgrading here, F4, um, toward an eventual sanctuary. I don't think they will get it this round because they won't have enough coins, um, but eventual sanctuary and therefore potential interest of a town here. So this hex is not one that really affects me, but a, a, a very curious and interesting one to watch for this game because it's the easiest way for engineers to connect and also would prohibit this darkling town. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Fakirs are just doing a couple jumps with their... Um, priests that they generated for double temple and, and workers just to sort of get their economy rolling and the dark things are in the midst of upgrading to a temple i don't know if they're going to be able to do much else this round after that dwelling rush opening but with that opening and also having started uh as 40 faction he has a nice uh point space to build off here now um all i have done this round is uh upgrade to a tp um, which it's a TV scoring round. And so now I'm in this kind of interesting position where I actually, this is a good point to be having the video because I feel like I have a few different options that I, that I should consider. Um, so option number one is to build another temple uh, and take a scoring favor, probably Earth One. Uh, this would kind of be maybe what I would consider like my default option, pretty standard if you open with an econ favor in round one, and there's a TP or a temple event in round two, but, uh, especially if there's a temple event, this is TP, so it's a little fuzzier. Um, but that would set me up well to potentially build a bunch of dwellings um, in this round three dwelling round and score lots of points for them. So that would, that would be nice. Um, another option is maybe slightly more economic option is to go ahead and build a dwelling now on G10, um, or sorry, D10. This is probably a little bit less interesting just because uh, next round is the dwelling scoring round. Um, and I guess the question really is to think about how many dwellings am I otherwise going to be able to build next round? Um, and so, and then the final, well, sorry, there's two more options. The third option would be to, uh, advance my ship, um, which would basically be in preparation for next round. Uh, and then the final option would be to just pass um, for this pretty juicy looking spade tile. Um, so the one thing that's that I, I've been thinking about a lot here is like, I wanna build as many dwellings next round as possible. Um, and there are a lot of blues, but I need spades to get to them. So this is one of the weird things about this map and lakes is also kind of like this, that a lot of these blues are actually like, it's funny, cause, this map has a reputation for being really strong for mermaids, but I find some of it kind of awkward where like, you know, H10 is blocked by G9, A10 is blocked by B8. 
I mean, I-7 is not blocked from the river completely, but if I wanted to get to it, my easiest way would be to go through H8. So things that would make next round, like, really cool would be if I could either, like, get to three ship and have a spade tile, which I could actually do if I pass for single spade, took coins action, and use both of the priests that I have to advance my ship. Um, that would be pretty interesting, especially if I could snag g4 because something like that is i could build g4 maybe even use a spade tile on g6 um i mean i don't know if the engineers are going to let me get away with all of that he actually now that he has g5 and e2 is not so uh g6 is not like imperative for him um so if i could swing around that that would be really cool and even get to i7 that would be four uh, uh dwellings on just a single spade and obviously advancing my ship so that's something that I, I think I'm pretty interested in pursuing. Um, the, another option would be to try to take double dig for next round. Um, the issue is I well, the issue with double dig is I'd really probably prefer to have at least one more ship advance before I were to do a double dig. I guess I could do a six, which I probably ultimately want for a town anyways, and then b eight off off single digs, and that would still be one, two, three, four dwellings. That's not so bad. Um, so lots of options. I'm also pretty sure no one is going to pass. I'd be, the, the, the one I'm concerned about is the engineers um, who don't produce their third dwelling. So don't have a ton of incentive to build this F3 right now. And I could see him passing for the spade tile, which also would be bad because I mean, he might put it on G6. The Darkling is not going to pass because they're definitely going to build a temple, and I'd be pretty surprised if George forewent both building another dwelling and this bump, uh, this cult bump, especially since he wants to go up to the four spot on air to get a uh, to get a spade. Now the thing is, if I don't take the spade tile, I could take ship scoring, which especially if I'm planning on advancing my ship a couple times. Is pretty nice but the problem is i don't have enough uh power to do both ship score or to do both the coins action and a spade on power unless i get some leech back um which is why the spade tile is so appealing on the other hand the ship scoring tile is nine points if i get to three shipping but three shipping without a spade is not nearly as useful um you know that only allows me by itself to to build two dwellings g4 and d10 which i can build no matter what so i'm a little torn but i'm but i'm leaning toward taking the spade tile and the question is simply whether or not i feel like i can afford to take another action first um, I guess I don't have that much incentive to do so, because if I think if I think what I'm aiming for is five dwellings, one, two, three, four, five, then I have the workers, and I think I'll have the coins, right? That would be eleven plus three plus seven is eighteen. Spend eight. Yeah, that would actually be the perfect amount. Oh, plus a little bit more because I'm gonna convert one so yeah i think this is going to be i think this is going to be the answer and then what i'll do is build water two or sorry water one in the temple round round four which actually should be fine and i'll have tempo on it because i'm going to leave a tp standing i don't think anyone else is going to do that and that also sets me up pretty nicely clusters wise g6 h6 is like a little awkward and that's two in one cluster but I don't know if there's any way I can get away from that. I could also potentially steal E4 if instead of G6 if people aren't careful next round, which would be really quite snazzy. Um, so I think that's how it's going to go. I'm probably only looking at two towns this game, which is probably what you're looking at with clusters anyways. Um, and my towns are probably pretty safe. I think I can pretty clearly get one here over in the east, either connect F5 to these guys, or if I eventually get B8, connect up here, and I'll probably have 
a neighbor from the Fakirs coming up here to these yellows to do that. And then what might end up ultimately becoming a sanctuary town, d6, c4, and ideally a6, or if I have to, like a5. Um, but that feels like a pretty good setup to aim for. And then obviously if I'm getting to three ship, I can also try to get ship scoring in round four. So I think that's going to be the plan. Um, yeah. So let's do it. Um, I just had one more thought, which is there is one other option, uh, which would be to send my priest to air and then try to get a priest action and send it to air also, which are triple reward cults. So that's pretty interesting. This is obviously completely foregoing the shipping situation, but if I get a cult spade, then I have lots of dwelling spots without even having these spades. But there's no way I get the spade tile that, this round. Like, so you're really only doing it for the cult bonuses, which feels less good than just advancing my shipping and being able to then hopefully hit the shipping scoring tile. Okay, I think we have collectively discussed all of the options. <laughs> uh, this was definitely a cool decision point to think through. Uh, but so let's do this. We'll do one conversion in case I pick up. Well, actually, let's see. What leech might I pick up? We're almost certainly going to get a Darkling. Uh, temple here, and that's probably the only leech that I'm getting. But so should definitely plan to make sure I can capitalize on that. And then we're going to pass for this spade. Right? There's still part of me that's like, why can't you get Earth 1 first? But I don't think it makes sense. Because I think I'm just better off using those workers. If for some reason it lo it's looking like I won't be able to get the full five dwellings next round, then maybe I build Earth 1 before I build any dwellings instead. Because I can easily build three dwellings with basically no concerns. Um, but I think if I can get the five dwellings down, claiming some of this territory, I think that's a much more valuable thing than Earth 1. Especially since this is the last dwelling scoring event. If there were another dwelling scoring event in like round five, it would feel different. But I think just covering the territory and then trying to... After that, actually, it'll be playing a little bit tall with like a water one, air one. Okay, I think that's gonna be the plan. We'll see how it goes. All right, moving on. Game number two, I promise I won't spend 20 minutes on all of them, uh, mainly because I don't have time to do that. All right, here is the next game. So this is fun times on revised base map. We've got, uh, I'm playing dwarves against Red Alert's Mermaids, George's Fakirs, and Barnawal's Alchemists. Uh, another game that uh, in round two and has been uh, pretty interesting. This one I think is going very well for me. I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with how we sit so far. Um, so to recap round one, my round one was I was able to get um, a, a single, uh, single dig on E9. Um, and that enabled me to build uh, two dwellings. Uh, and then also I was able to build a temple and a TP because I was on the big building tile, um, which was uh, really cool. Um, and, and in a game that's a little bit coin short and also was TP scoring in round one, Dwarves first TP produces three coins. So being able to actually get that dwelling up 
Um, it's a tiny bit of a trade-off because dwarves do always want more workers and it does take away a little bit of worker production, but I think having this TP that can just sit there for a couple rounds and generate coins in a, tw in a coin type game um, was really valuable. Um, and then on top of that, um, I got a ton of leech because um, Barnwall invested in, he was in fourth seat and with his first action took a, a priest on top of the priest that he took um, as the past tile in the first round um, so that he could do double shipping and go A, B, 3. But because I was able to get two full actions in before he uh, upgraded at all, I got an absolute ton of leech um, from this section. And in fact, he didn't build his temple until his last action. So I had all of this stuff built already which then funneled me all this leech back, enabled me to get double dig here in um, round two, which was a dig round, which was really nice. Um, and so I did that double dig here on G2 and also uh, tunnel hopped over to D3 or to G3 through the landscape down there, um, which ha has automatic connection to H6 here. So I can uh, connect just via H6 or obviously like G4 would work too. Um, just giving me some extra flexibility and just didn't need to put a, a dwelling here. Um, you know, my original thought was actually to, that I was going to throw the landscape uh, at some point on I-6, but when I had the opportunity to just grab G3, figured I'd go ahead and do that. Um, so this uh, this round is set up really nicely. It's too bad I don't have like one more worker because I could uh, go ahead and build another, another dwelling, but that's okay. Um, so the, oh, the last thing I want to do here is, uh, throw my priest, which is, this is the action that I'm going to take, throw my priest to earth here, um, to just get some more coins back. And this is, again, is a triple value, uh, priest. I'll make sure I get to the eight spot by the end of round four. Um, and then my plan going forward is next round, I'll have plenty of resources to build a, uh, sanctuary, probably for earth one. Uh, only one copy of Earth One has been taken so far, and I, uh, I guess it's possible that both. I don't think the mermaids are going to pass before me because he's still got. Um, well, is he going to pass right now? Oh, the fakirs aren't going to pass because they're going to build a dwelling. So I'm going to pass with my next uh, action, and I'll be able to build my sanctuary with my first action to secure Earth One before both mermaids and fakirs could snipe it away from me. Um, so that'll be really nice. And then um, I'll finish off the town in round four, and then otherwise I'll be trying to just build out a lot of these grays. Um, there's no more dwelling rounds, so once I've got Earth One, I can just build those dwellings as soon as I have the, the resources to do so. Uh, ideally, if I can also grab... I-6 and I-5, this could become a second town, or maybe I have room for a second or third town down here. Um, Alchemist, so we, we mentioned that they opened temple, three dwellings, and two ships. Pretty nice for them. He was also able to uh, snag the big building tile here for round two, which is always really nice for Alchemist. Uh, I don't know if he's going to build a sanctuary or not this round, or for a wait until next round. Um, he doesn't really have anywhere else he can build, so if he wants to use those workers, he might go ahead and do that on E10, or maybe he'll wait for the... It's only one point difference, so he'd probably do it this round. Uh, I do assume he'll build, obviously, this dwelling on G5 either way. Um, so that's a pretty uh, a pretty strong opening for Alchemist, especially given he was the 40 faction. Um, his The ability to get up to three ship this round and sneak down to F5 to have this stretch to build a town out in addition to... Over here, I don't really have that much ability to disrupt him and then whatever he can figure out up here. So, like, you know, Barnwell's well on his way already to to three towns and probably pretty good distance. Um, it'll be interesting. I think the Fakirs will beat him to B2, but if he can dig around here, maybe he puts, like, Sanctuary E10 all the way to a stronghold on, like, A4, for example. That's, that's going to be a pretty strong Sanctuary stronghold distance. So, uh, despite being the 40 faction... Um, in a pretty good spot for, for Barnawal. The mermaids got double dig in round one and dug E7. This is the one of the nice features about revised base for blue and one of the, the reasons that they're so good. Um, on this map is that they have much better ability to cut through the middle because they have a, a single hex, uh, a single dig hex next to their starting spot in the middle as opposed to regular base where these two are flipped and that would be a double dig hex. Um, 
But so yeah, he dug e7 and f2. Um, he did it on worker power, which meant he was able to open TP in four dwellings, took fire one, super strong, big economic open from mermaids, although a little bit similar to Red Alert's game in the past one, uh, very flipped from the, uh, the track, right? So round one was TPs, round two was spades. Uh, he did the spades in, in round one and is now um, figuring out what he's going to do in round two. He did build, he did advance his ship and built another dwelling here on h4 and then we'll see what he does next he could hard dig something to take advantage of this spade round or he might just pass um probably presumably to like build a sanctuary and then maybe advance his ship again and build a bunch of dwellings if he gets to ch three ship he has one two three more blues plus maybe a spade him four or five so although he's gonna run out of dwellings before he can build all those um but so uh, interesting setup for uh, mermaids and, and, you know, yellow and blue are similar on this map to they are on base map that they are just such nice friends. So one of the issues that mermaids often run into is having neighbors over here in the West, but not going to be a problem for in this game with Fakirs on E5 and D3. Uh, Fakirs, George, this is the second Fakirs game in the same season with the same opening, uh, Double Temple. Um, this one, uh, I think, you know, a little bit better than in the other game because at least it was a TP scoring round, so he was able to uh, take advantage of those. Uh, he also was on Colt Coins, so um, his his natural step plus air two plus the Colt Coins got him to uh, the four step on air to take advantage of that round one Colt reward. He threw that dig on E6, so presumably we'll build that dwelling this round in addition to uh, he did a flight over here to uh, D3, also threw a uh priest to fire so it looks like we're going to get a bit of of a culty fakirs game which actually kind of makes sense given that uh this is a relatively non-culty set of factions uh dwarves can be a little bit culty and obviously i did i have uh got some space up here on earth um and we'll probably try to continue to compete on at least that cult but mermaids and alchemists are often pretty unculty so fakirs you know, usually they want to spend their priests to fly around, but if they throw a couple to uh, a couple early cults, can also um, find some points that way. So uh, an interesting, an interesting start from from George. And given how low scoring this track is in general, I think that the inherent scoring, if he can do a lot of flights, um, and this is a landscape game, by the way. Um, so if he gets his landscape down, uh, could be a pretty strong game from Fakirs also. So. Uh, early goings, I think everyone in this one is in a decent uh, position, so we'll just have to see how uh, some of this evolves. Um, my biggest fear right now is missing Earth 1. I'm not that worried about it. I'm pretty sure at least Mermaids or Fakirs, one of them, will take another action. If they both pass and then both open Sanctuary Earth 1, I will be a sad panda, but I think that's a risk that i got to take. So that is... This game. Let's move on. All right, game number three is one of the Fire and Ice factions game on Fjords here. Again, we've got the Sanctuary Stronghold distance scoring. Um, this is my other game where I ended up on Mermaids, and this one is the one where I intended to take fire one and actually did take fire one um but i'm playing as mermaids against melison's alchemist barnwall's iceman's and george's shapeshifter so we've had a lot of super interesting stuff happen in this game some of it not so good for me uh admittedly and and maybe others saw this a little bit better than me and maybe i overvalued mermaids a little bit uh because of it not that i think my position is uh really ruined by any means but you know it was kind of the uh, Barnwall's Ice Maidens did basically exactly what I didn't want them to do in sort of a whole series of things um, that have put a bit of a damper on my game. So uh, I think we talked about last time he placed uh, his first dwelling here on H4, took uh, Air 2 as his opening Ice Maidens favor, and then um, neither Alchemists who were in seat 4 nor Shapeshifters in seat 3 took worker power as their round one bonus tile alchemist took um uh what did alchemist take alchemist took the spade and shapeshifters took the big building tile 
um, which meant that no matter what, I couldn't prevent Barnawall from having access to double dig. I went ahead, so I just went ahead and took worker power. Barnawall did go ahead, in fact, and take uh, ship scoring and opened double dig and stole F3 from me, which is pretty sad, as well as also building E8. He's now was able to actually find enough uh, leech and power, partially because he has air two, um, to also get a uh, double dig here in round two. So really strong start for Ice Maidens. Um, and, you know, I'll be interested to see maybe if we do the debrief or whatever at the end of the uh, series. You know, I'd love to hear Barnwell's perspective on if he sort of saw this potentially happening um, because everyone else had Ice Maidens rated quite lowly. Two, two of us had it as the fourth faction in, in the fast auction. One person had it third, but by a big gap. And then Barnwell had them first. So he got them, obviously, and maybe he saw this opening coming, but um, still not, you know, um, everything is maybe great for him, right? And the fact that he's probably not going to connect. And so he may score no end game points on like network or uh, uh, sanctuary stronghold scoring, but has a really nice economy with all of this stuff out, obviously started with a bit of a, a points lead, um, and then also is doing quite well on the cult. So, um, you know, maybe early game pole position to Barnwall's Ice Maidens here in uh, this one, and presumably he'll build another temple next round, Stronghold in round four. Um, if he does that with a couple towns and wins cults, um, that might that might be enough if he can find enough points along the way, despite the lack of end game scoring. So... Uh, you know, getting out spades and dwellings early in the game is, is the biggest struggle for Ice Maidens. Um, he has obviously found a way quite easily to overcome that. Um, another interesting thing that's happening in this game is we had, we had two copies of Water 2 taken in the first round. So uh, Ice Maidens took one with, with their temple, and then Alchemist also took one um, with the temple that they opened with in round one. Uh, obviously, both Ice Maidens and Alchemists start with a water step, so those water twos allowed them to get up to the four spot on uh, water. I took the priest action uh, and threw it to, to water, so I was also able to get there, and so all of us hit this round one um, dwelling scoring water reward of an extra priest, um, which was quite nice. Um, so for me, I, I was able to do that, and then the power that I got back from that, plus some leech that I got, uh, enabled me to also get single spade. I was able to secure F5 here, which is pretty nice because if I can connect that up with uh, D2, this is a nice sanctuary town spot in the middle, or maybe even I also get C5 and then it's just a normal town spot. Um, but then what was nice was those two um, priests that I pulled back, my normal production plus the bonus one from the cults, plus landing on ship scoring and grabbing the coins action has meant that I've been able to advance my ship here to three ship for this round two while I'm on ship scoring. So I'm going to pass for nine points, which will be really nice. And also this has enabled me to build I-5. And before this round's over, I'm going to build G2 and B3 as well. Um, so this feels like a pretty decent economic opening. And then I'll try to build another temple for uh, a scoring favor next round. Um, my issue really is that without F3, I'm in a little bit of a tricky spot uh, town-wise. As I said, I, I think I will probably be able to find one here in the middle, but where I get another good town spot that has neighbors is definitely uh, to be seen. There's one option to potentially maybe try to do G3 connected up with G2 and some stuff over here, but I don't know... I don't think the Ice Maidens will come over to this far uh, southwestern continent, so this would probably be G3, my only neighbor spot, so that's a bit of a concern. Another one could be this lower stretch down here, um, although uh, Ice Maidens probably want one more hex, and I2 is only a single dig from them, so I will be on G2 and have the shipping, so if he's not expedient about grabbing I2, maybe I can steal it, and if I can snag I2 and I3 then obviously this becomes a pretty nice town spot. So that's that's one option. The other option might be something like D1 connected up here, although that faces some of the same issues as the G3 over here and that I only have one spot that has a neighbor. So um, we'll see how, how all of that goes. I guess the B4 probably will eventually have a neighbor because if 
the shapeshifters want a town off this stronghold, which presumably they do. Their easiest way to get that is going to be uh, C4. In fact, it wouldn't shock me if he tried to advance his ship again to get to B5 and then shift to Brown, which gives him some nice places to build. Um, so that's sort of the situation that I find myself in right now as mermaids. Um, Alchemist, by the way, um, G5 got boxed in, um, so he's probably just going to sit there, leave that, and abandon it. But he was otherwise able to open with... Uh, he had the, the spade tile, so that's how he grabbed F7. Uh, built this temple, also advanced to ship once last round with, I believe, must have been a five-power priest because I was the one who got the priest action. So I was able to do I-8, I think, and then got the priest action this round plus um, the priest that he produced to get all the way up to three shipping. So now he's going to be able to build a bunch of dwellings. He's starting this pretty standard on Fjord's black shipping spree where you go E-10, A-10, C5, A6, he's, he's going to be able to build all three of these dwellings this round. So he's going to end this round with Sanctuary. Eight dwellings, which for round two feels pretty good. Um, so that's pretty nice for, for Alchemist. Um, uh, needs, uh, and, and already has Earth 1 also with this Sanctuary. Did it on the big building scoring. So uh, also in a really nice spot. Obviously he had the uh, the points deficit. So that's that's part of it. Everyone's for new Alchemist. We're going to be in a, in a good spot. Uh, this game, but if he can do that and also find maybe a copy of Water 1 next round, uh, eventually get his digs advanced with all these workers that he's going to produce, um, it's going to be a pretty nice game for the Alchemists also. So, um, And then finally, Shapeshifters in this one. Uh, got to see the super fun uh, Shapeshifters Stronghold opening. So uh, George was on the big building tile, built Sanctuary in round one, didn't secure another spade, but shifted... Uh, from yellow, his starting color, to red. So he was able to build E5 and D3. And then this round, um, got a spade to dig F6 and also advanced his ship to get down here to H6. So he's got a nice uh, economic base uh, here. Also, the uh, he does not have you know a temple yet. So that's kind of the thing that's missing from his arsenal. But presumably we'll, we'll get that built next round for, for a scoring favor. So, you know... As to be expected in a bunch of games with very good players, as all these Division I uh, games are, I think everyone uh, has a line that seems pretty strong. Um, it's a little bit hard for me to tell who is uh, best in, in general. I, I Maybe it's, I'm always biased towards Ice Maidens. I really like Barnwall's position in this game, getting double dig in both the first two rounds, especially as an Ice Faction feels... Well, not any Ice Faction. It wouldn't be as quite a big deal for Yeti. So, especially as Ice Maidens feels very strong, so I like his positions. But I think everyone uh, is really viable right now, and so we'll have to see how this pans out. You know, if I'm being honest, I probably like my own position the least here, but at the same time, I don't think it's bad. So, um, let's build our dwelling. And we will move on. to the final game. You know what I just realized in the last game, I said that Alchemists had, Alchemist had a big points deficit, but they actually didn't, now that I'm remembering it correctly. The reason their points are so far down is they've done a ton of coin convert, uh, point to coin conversions to get their shipping up to three and build a sanctuary and build all these dwellings, not in you know a dwelling scoring round. So uh, that is why he has so few points. So I guess that's the, the alchemist trade-off, right? You spend a bunch of points early. Um, so he has to find a way to make those up. But it was not actually the deficit. Alchemists were, a, for that game was 40, 40, 40, 36. Um, so important clarification. All right, final game. Oh, no, not the final game. Uh, someone took an, oh wow. People took their actions already in this game. Just while we were on this stream, people took all their actions. So look at this. We get to make two moves in the same game on one stream. Uh, we came back to my Dwarves game here, and uh, it looks like nobody passed. Uh, George Fakirs took a power action. Red Alert did, in fact, do a hard dig. I guess he wanted to take advantage of Temp Ship while he had it. Um, oh, he didn't advance his shipping. He's on Temp Ship uh, to do C1 here. And the 
Alchemist came down and built here on H5. Ah, I missed that. So he's actually going to get two more, two dwellings out this round, not just G5, but also H5. Um, but good news is this will allow me to go ahead and pass. Um, and so now I quickly need to determine uh, which tile I want to pass on. Um, I don't think the priest is that relevant for me right now because I want to build a sanctuary next round. So I think it's either cult coins or this TP scoring tile. The TP scoring tile is interesting. Eh. It's kind of interesting. So the worker is always nice as uh, dwarves. And I do have quite a bit of coins coming in. Um, I'm not going to build a TP on E9 this round because I actually don't want to finish the town this round. I want to... Uh, save that for the round four town round, but I could build another TP on F4. I think I ultimately may want a stronghold here actually, or no, I probably want the stronghold down on I5, but that's, I could still go ahead and build this TP on F4, um, which will be good because this coins influx that I'm getting is a one-time thing from the cult bonus. So I think that actually feels better than cult coins, especially since this has two coins on it, the extra worker. So that would give me eight workers next round. I'd be able to build sanctuary and a TP. And then I'd be one worker short of building another dwelling via tunneling. Um, but maybe I could get the workers action. I'm still do probably another couple leech here. Plus I produce two. Um, and unfortunately, normally in this kind of situation, you would open with the coins action, but I don't think I can afford to do that here. I think it's more important to open with my sanctuary to secure, uh, earth one. So, but then again, Fakirs may actually end up with the, as being the only ones with, with power. So he would probably take the workers action, but that at least means I could wheel, uh, he may take the coins action, but that at least means I can wheel the workers action. So. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I could even put my, ultimately put my stronghold on I3. It would be a round six thing for the points, not so much for extra actually making use of the stronghold ability, but that would be a pretty nice sanctuary stronghold distance, I3 to D7. Okay, cool. All right. Let's actually move on to the last game. That was a bonus move, guys. All right, last game. So this is the super fun one, my home game. Uh, Fire and Ice map, Fire and Ice factions. And I am playing the Ice Maidens and another game that uh, I paid a lot for the Ice Maidens. Uh, from, but I got my preferred faction, but this one maybe uh, unlike that Mermaids game where I paid a lot and I was sort of, eh, my position. This one, I like my position uh, quite a bit. Most things have gone how I expected. So round one in this game was uh, TP scoring round uh, with the Earth, uh, or sorry, the Air reward. Uh, I was able to get on the Priest bonus tile and throw a Priest to Air. Um, so I was able to get that reward, but I was also still able to get double dig because uh, I took air two with my opening uh, favorite tile as the ice mates. So I was able to get uh, that double dig and I opened with uh, this temple here on C5 plus double dig, uh, turned C5 to ice and built there before I built the temple. And then it also turned B5 to yellow. And then the cult dig from air is what made that ice now. And so now this round in round two temple round, I'm going to build another temple for uh, Earth one and build this dwelling. Uh, I was also able to get both the coins action and the workers action this round, which was amazing. Um, and so next round, I'm going to be set up really, really nicely to advance my digs um, and build, start to build out some dwellings. And over the course of rounds four, three and four, I should be able to build a whole bunch of dwellings. I'm going to grab Earth one right now, so we'll be able to score them very well. I'll be able to build out lots of town space. Uh, one up here from C3 going up all the way through A2. Another one from here, ideally going up through 
uh, A9 or B8. Um, I noticed that the, uh, this is the Fire and Ice map, so around the edges, uh, they've got this like volcano-y artwork down here and this ice artwork down here. And I was like, it's so cool that I'm gonna build these all these ice tiles up next to this ice artwork. And it's like fitting with the theme of the map where the ice is gonna come flowing down from the top of the, the northern part of the map um, and create my little ice maiden kingdom. So that'll be uh, that'll be super fun. So I really like uh, my positioning in in this game. Um, also a really interesting game from what else is going on. So the uh, Giants, if you remember last time we were talking about how Dragon Lords decided to start on G4 instead of D6, which freed up the Giants to start on uh, D7. He actually didn't even put his Giant Spade on uh, E3 last round. He actually in the first round put it on H6 because I think he was worried about the Dragon Lords coming and cutting him off from... Um, this southeastern continent and these nice red hexes. Um, and so he actually uh, dug H8 and then did E3 this round. Um, but either way, a pretty nice um, start for the Giants. He's got a bunch of dwellings, just took a priest action as his last action. So presumably he's gonna advance his ship, which will allow him to build even more dwellings. Now, the one thing is he's building out all these dwellings in round one and round two before there's dwelling scoring in round three and round four, so maybe that's not quite as nice. Um, but otherwise, a pretty nice economic opening for the Giants. Um, I uh, I did have to upgrade my um, uh, TP here last round, despite another action that I'm that I'm now going to take because I was worried about potentially losing uh, Earth One, as the Dragon Lords and the Witches also had both built TPs and. Um, the witches already now have built their temple to build Earth One, and the Dragon Lords, uh, I'm guessing, are going to do so here on G8 with their next action. The Dragon Lords in round one uh, opened kind of as I expected. They snagged E5 to block the witches out a little bit from the east. Um, and the witches can still get there coming this way via shipping, but it's much less nice than that. You know, they, they're not going to get a town off this E4, E4 starting hex. And then obviously Barnwall also uh, claimed a couple other spots down here, started to build these things out. Um, maybe because the dwelling rounds are a little bit later and he wanted to go up first a little bit. He took Earth 2 uh, as a Dragon Lords, which is an interesting pull. Um, Dragon Lords, I, I think I talked about this in the opening one. I, I think they're kind of a weak faction. I think they're very tricky to play. I find that every time I take an economic favor as the Dragon Lords, I look back and be like, damn, I needed more points. I should have taken a scoring favor. And every time I take a scoring favor, my, my econ feels insufficient because... Uh, there's holes in their production. They don't have a base worker production. Um, but so Barnwell with the with the economic side of that, um, I guess this is a relatively high scoring track in general. So I think there's some some benefit there. It'll be interesting to see what he does. So the one thing that could mess with my plans for uh, the next couple rounds here are if Barnwell passes on to temp ship and tries to advance his ship and threaten B6, uh, that would be very bad for me. This is a very important hex. It's the only way I can get a town off of these guys and also is my access to, to the, um, these other ones. So I would love, love to get on the temp ship myself. Um, that, would, that would be the, the optimal uh, answer here. Um, another answer might be I have to like build an early uh, bridge and even potentially dig more than I want to. Like there are potentially a couple bad outcomes um, if he decides to threaten that hex. So kind of just fingers crossed hoping maybe that like witches take temp ship or something beforehand because he need, Dragon Lords would need two ships to get here. He's not going to dig D9 because it's a double dig. Um, so it's really only the two ship threat. So I just have to keep an eye out for that. I'll know before my, the end of my round because he's going to pass well uh, before me because he probably only has one action left, whereas I have, uh, I think, three. So uh, we'll get to know, but that is one thing that could be tricky. And then finally, the witches um, got, uh, let's see, they, I think, took the priest action in round one. Yeah, they took the priest action in round one, uh, advanced their shipping, and just opened temple three dwellings, shipped to G6 and A6. He took uh, air two. Uh, in order to get up here and get an air spade himself. And that was the the dig that he threw on D6 and then built there. Um, this was really interesting because he did this uh, and I think was, oh no, I guess he was ahead of the Giants in seed order. So he knew he was going to be able to build there before the Giants.
giants could uh, steal it away, and now he's upgraded to another temple. Um, don't love the witch's position here, admittedly. I mean, he's got one town spot here, d6 through a6, but needs another dig and a bridge. And then after that, he really needs to get his shipping up, which is one of the reasons I'm kind of hoping slash thinking he might get on temp ship, although he also doesn't have a lot of coins. But if he passes right now for temp ship, takes the coins action, he only needs one more. He can immediately build F3, and then one more ship advance will get him over to, like, D3, F1, and also D9. Um, that will uh, make his game look, I think, quite a bit uh, quite a bit better. Um, we'll see. The Dragon Lords, if they're aggressive, can probably box him out of a town on this continent down here, but the Witches could probably find another one over here in the northwest. So... Um, Overall, still really like my position in this game. Just a couple things to watch out for. Um, but yeah, if I have these two temples, if I can get these dwellings and towns out, look at a, a stronghold in like round four, maybe round five, maybe uh, score some points off the temples that way. Um, I think I can and, and continue to play culty too. So coming back uh, finally. So I had to upgrade. I've been taking things successively because I thought they were like too good to pass up. So I took the coins action, then I took the workers action. Then I upgraded this TP because I didn't want to miss Earth 1. But all of that while thinking the move that I really want to make is sending a priest to water, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, this is a, another, as we've talked about it in three games now, triple value priest that I'm going to get some coins back in these later water rewards and also just continue to, uh, you know, play very culty as the Ice Maidens often do and I often like to do as them. Um, so I'm very happy that this is finally, I'm finally able to do this. Um, maybe gives the witches that much more incentive to pass too, which is what I want to see. Um, and so this, that's the move for now. Really happy that, that the witches didn't take this earlier, that it's still sitting here for me. Um, and now I'll be able to go ahead and build my, my temple and my dwelling. And I have a cult step here. Um, and then we'll see what, what tiles left for me by the end of this round. I think anything like coins or uh, worker power or even dwelling scoring, I think would be um, quite fine and interesting for me to end this round. Um, but I'm not sure, a little bit unclear how many actions people are gonna take, so. Um, so anyways, uh, that is it. We have gone through all the games. So we will be back in another couple days or whenever there is meaningful progress to uh, note, I, saw, I just noticed this comment from earlier. Uh, this is probably going back to the first Mermaids game. Um, I think I mentioned that I was worried about not passing and losing the um, dwelling, or losing the spade tile is why uh, normally, yes, I would want to build the dwelling, especially with the dwelling tile in hand. Um, but uh, it was more about tempo on the, on the spade tile, so... Uh, anyways, thanks y'all for watching. Um, see you in a couple days. And until then, uh, enjoy TMTL. If you didn't catch the Premier League game last night, uh, I got edged out. I played a, a halfling game that I enjoyed quite a bit, but ultimately lost out to a high ceiling chaos magician that we didn't uh, slow down uh, enough. But if you wanted, if you didn't watch it, Mr. Fickles and Jekyll did the VOD. Go find it on YouTube. It was super entertaining. Uh, cast there. They are a great uh, pair. So check that out and we'll see you all next time.